Good morning and welcome back to Tommy's Tesla Tech and Travel. So this is a comic book edition, but not just any kind of comic book edition. We are at WonderCon 2024 here in Anaheim, California. First off, I just want to say thank you to my wife who's basically told me to take this trip, enjoy myself, and go comic booking, something I haven't done for a while. Originally I was supposed to come with a couple friends, but it didn't work out that way, so I'm here solo for the next three days just doing nothing but comic booking. Well, maybe some other stuff too, but mostly comic booking. I just want to give you guys like a, um, a synopsis of what I'm aiming to do while I'm here. First and foremost, I came here specifically to look for a specific book, but actually I bought that book about two, three weeks ago in Phoenix, Arizona instead. So really I have no agenda here. I'm coming with a strict budget. I'm trying to buy something big. I want to buy a grail book for my collection. What book? I have no idea. And that's been kind of the fun part of this video. As fate would have it, I would actually find that grail book, but not in the way you're thinking. I actually picked it up as a direct result of the biggest oopsie I've ever had at a comic convention in my life. Luckily, it's a cool book I was thinking about getting, but I had no intentions of buying it at first. More on that later in the video. But also showing you the comic book Comic-Con life. I haven't been to a Comic-Con like this since last time I was in San Diego, which was 2010, 2009-ish. I can't remember exactly, but it's been a minute is my point. So what we're going to do here is have fun, enjoy ourselves. I'm staying just right across the convention. I'm literally like 150 yards from the convention center. So that's going to be fantastic. I'm also like 120 yards from Disney California Adventure because we're right across the street from Disneyland, which I was at yesterday. So if you haven't done so, please watch the previous video and I'll show you my day at Disney by myself as a solo dad. Well, guys, it's like 7 a.m. Let's get the bar. Let's get the party rolling. Go get some breakfast. Shout out to my Wildcats. They did lose to Clemson, but... We had a great season, so hopefully next year, we'll take it all. But right now, enough of the sports talk. Let's go comic booking after breakfast. You know, all the years we've come to Disneyland and everything else, we've never come to the Anaheim Garden Walk before. So I came over here for breakfast, and ironically ate at a chain restaurant. I've only stayed in Northern California near my brother and sister, instead of any of the local stuff. But I have to say, uh, we ate at Huckleberry's. I ate at Huckleberry's. That might be the best crab cakes I've had in a chain restaurant ever. I really wanted to ask my server if they were house-made or like pre-made, but he only came at my table once to drop off my food and that was it. But, best crabs egg benedict I've had since in San Diego a lot of videos back when we visited my friend Diana and them before. So good on you, Huckleberries. I'll try out again when I'm in Northern Cal. Right now, I'm gonna make one more stop and then we're gonna head to the convention. Now you've been seeing my people around all day. Badges, whole nine, <sighs> makes me excited. Getting my backpack ready for the convention, and I've been looking. Most places now require to have a clear bag. I looked on all their websites and all their bag policies, and I've seen nothing about a clear bag. So I'm bringing my Nike bag with my Marvel logo on there, and I'm keeping stay simple. A really good Ultra Pro protector, just in case I buy that Grail book today, which I doubt. Some nice, extra sturdy bags and boards, and some regular bags and boards. Ah, as I drop it. Just a regular ultra top loader. And then the book with a bunch of comics in there. Originally I was gonna bring an empty one and this one. This is the one, that's one with books I'm planning on getting signed. Well, hopefully I gotta get signed. Let me show you real quick. I got my Teen Titans annual number one, or number two, first appearance of, I just like blanked on his name. Jeez, you can tell I'm still tired. I already had it signed by George Perez, but Marv Wolfen's gonna be here, so I'm hoping to get him to sign that one. Same thing with this Teen Titans right here, number six, uh, number 17, already signed by George Perez. I just always love this cover. Defenders number three by Steve Englehart. Uh, Avengers number 141. This is the first one that George Perez worked on. It's already signed by him. And get Marv Wolfman to sign that. And then my Luke Cage books, first appearance of Mariah, and just another book, Cage book, both written by Steve Englehart. So those are the only two people I'm really here to see, per se, for autographs. Even then, I'm not that sold on making, I don't know if they're charging or what. And these older guys, I don't mind paying for their fees when they are charging a sign because they really didn't make a lot of money off of their creations and stuff way back when. Here are the other things I'm taking in my bag. A bottle of water. Make sure it's sealed. I don't know if they're allowing water bottles in that aren't sealed, but most places don't. A rechargeable battery pack. I forgot this yesterday at Disneyland and that was truly a pain in the butt. And my keys, you're like, why bring your keys? You don't use the keys. My air tags on them, just in case. And I'm gonna put those right here on the side in a pocket that I don't normally use. So if something happens in my backpack, I can try and track it real quick. That's what I'm taking with me to the convention. 
Oh, and of course my badge. And to give you an idea where the convention is, see there's D California Disney Adventure. It's that white building right there. So I'm just gonna cut right through this parking lot. So the thing I'm super excited about this show compared to the other combo conventions I've been to is one, I'm just here. Like I can do what I want, go what I want, see what I want. The other part is I'm so close with my hotel room I can take so many breaks. That's why I'm not concerned that I just realized, oh, I left my batteries for the camera back there. Cool, I'll walk the five minutes back and get them if I need. It's about an hour before the show starts, but we're gonna go check it out and see what's going on. Maybe text a couple of our friends to see if they're already here. Again, just an example, Disney California Adventure Convention Center. Extra security, which is always good for an event this big, as you never know. A lot of crazy folks out there. Even though it doesn't open for another hour, it looks like I'm able to possibly get in early. Just gave him a badge, I walked by, flashed it, and I'm heading toward the convention center. Let's go see what they got. I'm excited. Huh? Oh, uh, Two years ago. Okay, I, think, I thought I saw you guys. We well, made it. Uh, so I actually had my badge shipped to me, but if you're here to pick it up, you bring your barcode in and go through this door right here. And this is where you pick up all your goodies for the show, like the, uh, the gift bag, if you will. I am going to say I really do appreciate how well they have this thing marked out and mapped out for entry. As a veteran of San Diego Comic Con, it was never this smooth. Uh, I am an hour early, that's the line for the exhibit hall, but since we're not here for anything like exclusive or limited, I'm gonna hang out outside for a little bit. Just checking out the events map here, and it's all over the place. The cool part is some of the comic book shops I would like to check out are highlighted on here, so I will take that. IDW's down here, be kind of cool. Our friend Jeff is gonna be way up here, and one of the places I wanna go to is Marv Wolfman, who's way over here. But just like San Diego, a sprawling event. And I kind of went into this completely blind. I didn't do any research beforehand, except I wanted to get some stuff signed by Steve Englehart, but I didn't see him on the guest list, so I wonder if he's actually still in attendance. I'm about to go get in line for the hall. It's about 30 minutes before it opens, but it's already starting to be a massive line. Like I said, nothing in particular I'm here for. I'm here just to enjoy myself, but that part of my anxiety kicks in. I gotta get in the convention center, so let's go. Like I said, massive line already. A little preview, and I already see some stuff that I know for some people that I, well, I don't want to say I'm friends with, but we're acquaintances. I once waited in line for an hour and a half just to get my badge at San Diego. This is nothing. To quote our buddy Captain America, I could do this all day long. They're just like, what? Why? It's time. I guess the phrase, unleash the Kraken, comes to mind. It's weird being at a convention and not tabling. And a big part of what I do at these shows is I'm trying, I will always try not to show all the original artwork by the artist because it's up to you to come find them and, well, pet, buy their wares. But I'll definitely talk to some people, and if they give me permission, then I'll show you. But until then, we're here to look at comics. I've been here for like three minutes, and I've already ran into two people I know that create comics. <laughs> um, but they were in a rush. We said hi real quick, high five, and said we'll catch up later. Well, here's something that kind of like what we're looking for. Let's take a peek. Daredevil number one, that's uh, on the potential list. I feel like a schmuck. I didn't realize it until right now. There's a whole other side of the convention. Yeah. Yeah. Just got done looking at one booth. They had a ton of amazing books. However, they were con price, which means I think they're about, on average, four to five hundred dollars above where I think they should be. But bear in mind, it just opened, which that means is we'll give it a day or two and we'll see if prices adjust because who wants to take all this stuff home with them? I smell more comics. When I see a book like this, the question is do I love my wife that much? because she'll divorce me. Okay, I'm not just saying this. This is the first convention I've been to in years where there's tons of comic books. That is a million dollar wall. Hey, look, we ran into our friends from Scottsdale. Oh, I can't wait. You probably saw our video with the Avengers number four and I'm out here and they're trying to take more of my money, but we'll see. It's a long weekend. <laughs> I'm already ready for like a mental break. I've already seen millions of dollars worth of comics, spoke to some people about some books. Thought I had the most deal of the century made. I was talking to the guy. They had a fantastic four number one, very low grade. And they're only asking 800. I was like, there's no way. So I said, let me see that book. And I said, 800? And he goes, 800. He looked. The person that marked it forgot to put down the other zero. They want 8,000. <laughs> That's close. This is a weird thing to be excited about. But this hall actually has full 5G service for all the carriers. I've never been to a convention where everybody's phone worked. So that's awesome, because you take your cards to the phone and everything else, but also me, I can call and make texts. And you probably already saw that clip earlier. I showed y'all a wall from Comic Connect that's millions of dollars worth of books. I just sent the picture to my wife. She just responded back with no. Side question, how many second mortgages can you have on one home? 
I guess we're gonna find out. Oh, that's good to know. I'm gonna bring my actual water bottle tomorrow. I love that those are everywhere here in California. It's nuts. No exaggeration. I'm so happy right now. Just saw his cousin yesterday at Disneyland. You know, why not? Or why not? Bad joke. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> if you've never really been to a comic convention before, spend a lot of your time in Artist Alley. It's all the people with original, one-of-a-kind artwork they created themselves, their own original stories, everything else. These are the people, this is how they make their living, by creating. Make sure you spend a lot of your time in this area because that's where you used to find me back in the day. And I can tell you right now, I've had good cons, I've had bad cons. It's about that time. I see one of the people I would like to get some autograph stuff from. Uh, they are charging 20 bucks per signature, but you know what? He's one of the, the goats, if you will. Totally worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Marv Wolfman. Ooh. So, just met Marv Wolfman again, and I can't believe, I don't know, I'm super excited. He's a super nice guy. He's responsible for some of my favorite characters. I mean, as many of you know, Blade is one of my favorite characters ever, and he's the guy that I credit with it. But, like I said, Teen Titans Annual number two, now signed by him and George Perez, the late George Perez, who to this day might be the single nicest person I have ever met. That's why I don't mind paying for the signature for some of these older creators because A, these characters they created and books they were responsible for, they never got a lot of the credit for it. And they didn't get any royalties or anything off it, they were work for hire. Um, so they didn't make a lot of money back in the day. So that's why zero problems with that. Now, as far as it goes, me trying to find that like Grell book or what have you, so far I've seen lots of potential candidates. And the question is, do I want to buy like a few mid-range quality books or one higher end book? I'm not 100% sure. Everywhere I turn at this convention, there is no shortage of comic books and wall books. Well, I've officially seen a turtle get down. Suck it, Vanilla. It's about a quarter till one. We're gonna take our first break, maybe grab some lunch. I think I'm gonna go switch into my Crocs. <laughs> Dogs are barking. But that was pretty successful first two hours of the convention. I got two days and five hours to go. Not sure what I want to do yet as far as the other stuff goes, but good start. Got a couple books signed by Marv Wolfman. Now I'm going to go walk across to my hotel and, well, rest. I'll be right back. And I think my favorite part is it is not too terribly crazy so far. I think it's because it's Friday. Most people are back to work. Spring break is over or getting started for some districts. But that's probably all going to change tomorrow. So I get the feeling if I'm going to make a move on a book or two, it should probably be tonight. Looks like I got a little more wild out here since I was here this morning. After a little break, a little editing, I think it's time to head back to the convention center. Let me show you exactly where it is from my room. All right, so here's the Hilton, and it's just next door to it. In fact, this little parking structure right down here, I just walked straight through there, and I'm in the convention. And we're back. If nothing else, their food truck game is on point. Speederman. Lots of Speederman. A little busier than this morning, but not by much. Well, we haven't been inside the hall yet. Let's find out for sure. I've actually always wanted to visit the Comic-Con Museum. I actually might swing by there. It's in San Diego and it's on my way back and there's a good chance I might not stay the whole day Sunday, we'll see. So if that's the case, maybe I'll swing by the museum. But none of my plans have gone the way they're supposed to this trip, so we'll see. And one thing about this convention that's made me really happy is pretty much all the comic book stuff is together. Kind of separating the artist stuff, the vendors and whatnot. Yeah, comic books and then kind of everything else, which I truly appreciate. I just had the biggest screw up of my life. I just made the biggest comic book screw up of my life and it cost me like a thousand dollars. More on that later. Because I, it's a cool book, I wanted it, but ooh. And then to make matters worse, when I was putting that book in my bag, I dropped my camera and broke the little clip that holds my microphone. It's been a day, I might ready to call it quits and just go get some food and call it a night. Ah, oh, that was rough. But there's an interesting side story to that that I'll share with you guys once I get back to the hotel, period. It might be the end of the first day for me. I have two more days here and I'm just still feeling sick to my stomach about the book that I dropped that I had to buy. I'm not sad that I got it. And it actually might have helped me decide on the other two books I might get while I'm here. I'll tell you what, 
Let's head back to the hotel oh, know, and we'll talk about it and I'll show you the book I'm talking about. Good thing Henry's not here. He'd either be losing his mind or going to battle. And I'm back at the hotel. So let's talk about what happened today. The books I got, the books I got signed, and the book I ended up buying. Again, it's not a terrible thing. It's a book I was interested in anyway. and something I had never personally seen before. And I actually found out a little bit more about it after I bought it. But let's start off at the beginning. First book I want to talk about that I picked up today on day one was Conversations of a Marriage. It's actually by my friend Jeff Pena, and it's, about, it's him and his wife, Trisha. This is actually a phenomenal series. I love all the books they do together. They're family-friendly, they're easy reads, and they're really funny and really well done. Um, and just to show you how dedicated he is, he told me the next book they have coming out, he has the rest of the month to finish a hundred illustrations for it. That's a... Bless him. <laughs> so, yeah, I love these series of books. I was going to get it. He actually was nice enough to gift this to me because, well... I done had a bad day and he saw that. <laughs> um, but I love their stories. I love their books. Um, I'll put a link down below. They have a series of books called I Frickin' Love You. It's about their process of their adopting their kids, growing together as a family. And if you have kids, it is the absolute perfect book because it's both from the parents' point of view and the kids' point of view. I, I love them. Uh, he has two more coming out. I can't wait to get those. The next books are books I got signed. I actually got these signed by Marv Wolf, but I kind of already showed you guys earlier. And the reason this was special to me is when George Perez actually took over the artwork on Avengers, and I had it signed by George Perez and Marv Wolfman. And, and as many of you know that are comic book collectors, uh, George Perez is no longer with us, and he's one of the nicest human beings ever. And the other one I got is my Avengers Annual Number no. Two, uh, first appearance of Vigilante, and I actually already had it signed by I already had it signed by George Perez as well, and now I have Marv Wolfman on there as well. So that's a big book. And now the book you guys have all been interested in. What book did I drop and I was kind of forced to buy? Well, they didn't force me. The guy actually just offered me the opportunity to pay him to have it reholdered, which would have been a great deal. However, it's a book I was semi-interested in because it's a book I have never seen before. Um, like I said, all my Grail books I've ever wanted are kind of already done. Now it's the books that I didn't know I wanted or books I never heard of before or something along those lines. And one of the books I've always wanted, even though I'm not the biggest fan, but it's something I've always been very interested in, is Incredible Hulk number 181, which is the first quote-unquote appearance of Wolverine. Uh, the reason I say quote-unquote, I'm of the mindset that Incredible Hulk 180 is the first appearance. Yes, he's just in one page in the back, but to me, that's that's the appearance. It's a cameo. No, it's an appearance. He, I'm the Wolverine. But this is a version I've never seen before. It's called La Mesa, or La Masa, sorry, La Masa. Um, it's the Spanish version of the book that came out in 1979 and even says in their first appearance of Wolverine, Wendigo appearance contains Incredible Hulk 181 and 182. So this is a first appearance of Wolverine and it's fully in Spanish. There's an interesting side note to this. I bought it from a company here uh, based out of San Diego called Blue Chip Comics. Um, I'll put their link down below. A super nice guy named Nico. Got along well. He, I love the fact he's a man. You didn't mean to drop it. I'm not going to beat you up over it. Appreciate that. Um, but something I was very interested in. Uh, there was someone else at the con who I, I ran into, but I didn't talk to because I didn't want to say, hey, man, we were both going after the same book. I ended up getting it because I dropped it. <laughs> I was actually Rob Liefeld, the creator of, of uh, Deadpool. I was standing next to him. There's another creator named Rob Michaels. They were standing next to each other. But, you know, ever since Deadpool's success and fame, you know, I'm sure people bother him all the time at conventions. The dude was just there shopping, so I wasn't going to bug him. But I wanted to run into him and be like, hey, man, I ended up buying it. Because like, he came over, like, right before me. I was like, oh, you have a La Masa? And I was all about it. He's like, I can't believe you have this book. They were talking about buying it. Um, I would tell you how much I paid, but to be honest, I'd rather not. Not until I talk to my wife about it anyway, maybe in a later episode. But the cool thing is, it is damaged here. The case is on bottom. It did crack when I dropped it, which is why I felt so bad and I ended up buying it. Um, but a very good friend of mine with a C, uh, CGC account we already talked about, it. I'm going to send in and get reholsters. I have a couple books I want to reholster anyway. What that means is they're going to re-slab the book in a new case and everything. But that's it, that's our haul from day one. A book that I was not intending on buying, but kind of gnarly. Uh, I still, I'm a little sick to my stomach that I dropped it. I have never done that before in my entire history buying comics like this. Hey guys, thanks for taking a ride with us. That was just day one at WonderCon here in Anaheim in 2024. We have two more days and hopefully some more adventures. And I haven't picked, figured out what books I want to get yet, but because of this one, it might have influenced the other two books I'm thinking about buying. But until then, bye bye everybody.